Hey guys, I want to share a game with you that I've literally just played. Uh, it's Friday evening, wasn't sure how well my, my brain was working, um, although I've just had a really, really good lesson with a new student. And um, we played an awesome game against Pablo, I think. Um, so I thought I'll take on an unrated game. And uh, I end up with a 30 minute rapid game against an opponent rated 1520, and I have the black pieces. So this is um, turns out to be one of one of my kind of preferred positions at the moment, um, and let, I'm going to show you the attack that that I like to play in that position. It's a really really interesting game. Um, so my opponent starts with e4, and I play e6. So this is going back to the the French defence, and we have d4, d5, and now there are a few ways it can go. But what we end up with is the French exchange variation. So e takes d5, e takes d5. And now bishop comes out. So I have in my mind a general plan that I, you know, my, my preferred attack in the French goes along the lines of putting my pawns on the light squares here, putting my bishop and my queen on this dark diagonal, and then attacking the king down there okay so it's a general plan and it's good to have ideas about your general attacking ideas um, in the game so knight to f3 now my, my bishop comes out to pin the knight and here's something i kind of realized yeah now very often one response to a bishop coming out pinning a knight to your king or queen would be to put your same colored bishop in the way so with this move, because he's moved his bishop out before his knight, to move the bishop back then would actually lose tempo, which is interesting. I never really thought of that before, but maybe that's one reason why we say knights before bishops. Anyway, as a general rule. So we have castles and knight to c6. So here, obviously, I'm... Yeah, I want to put this pawn there eventually, but I thought this is a tactic. I get to develop my knight and I'm attacking this pawn, right? Um, and the only defender of the pawn is this knight, which is itself pinned to the queen. So come out and then we have c3 to defend. Now I bring my bishop out onto its favoured diagonal and I'm developing and I'm possibly preparing to castle kingside. My opponent comes out to kick my bishop and I retreat my bishop back to all the way to e6. One thing this does is it blocks the uh, the d file from any nasty uh, rook attacks. So bishop comes out here to pin my knight. And I'm quite happy about this. I think if, if bishop takes, I'm going to recapture with my g pawn, open up the g file towards white's king. So I just swing my knight around. My knight's doing nothing there and I'd, I'd like to push this pawn at some point. Okay, we have knight d2, now I push my pawn, queen comes up backing up the bishop. So they're kind of looking at this pawn, which is currently defended twice. But white could take out one of the defenders if he wanted, and uh, remove the defender and then maybe get that. So now, my bishop drops back to c7, so I'm preparing to put my queen in front of the bishop, so that all I have to do is get rid of this knight that's defending h2, and I could go in with a glorious checkmate. Now we have rookie one, I kick the bishop. Bishop retreats. Now g5. So I'm thinking I'm gonna castle my king queenside. And um, so why not start pushing up on the king side? My opponent responds with the blocking move g4. I lift my queen. So this is interesting, okay? So I didn't put my queen straight on here because the knight's still there defending this square anyway, right? So I thought, I'll put the queen here. And then we might have ideas of the bishop sack. Right, this is a, quite a classic move. Um, bishop takes, pawn takes, then queen takes. Right, so now I've got my queen on this square. King has to move, he's in check. Probably move my queen to one side, maybe with another check. Well, certainly with another check. And then the knight can come in and try and checkmate that way. So I've got options now, I've got light squares, I've got dark squares, and my opponent seizes the initiative and throws his knight onto e5, blocking up my ideas and attacking my queen. So now I lift my queen. So now I'm thinking, 
you know, if he wants to take a pawn or at any point, or if this knight moves, then bang, the queen goes flying in there, all right? But he reinforces his knight and puts his other knight, because the knight from b1 moved flat here to d2, it can now step into its buddy's place, natural defensive place on f3. Good move. So we have castles from black, uh, a3. Um, now I decide to retreat my knight here where it's attacking this knight. Bishop simply pulls back. Now I kick the knight. The knight comes to there and we swap off. All right, so at least one knight's out of the way, but he's managed to sneak his queenside knight over to f3 anyway. So now I come around to attack the bishop. Bishop moves there. I just dodge my king out of the way. So the bishop's now attacking this. It's defended twice. So it's attacked twice by bishop and rook, defended twice currently. Rook comes forward now, but I still have to move this knight out of the way. So now the pawns come in, h5. I, 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 I just want to break open this position. White now adds another attacker. So we've got three attackers now against the bish. So I now take the initiative. I capture on g4. Now I'm threatening the knight. Right? But what can this knight do? It can't really move. If this knight goes anywhere, I've got queen h2 check. King has to come to here. And then queen h1 could be checkmate. All right? So we have pawn takes. Now rook up attacking the knight. So all I need to, I know all I need to do, because with this move, with bringing the rook across, white has blocked his king's escape. So now uh, white comes in with the rook, sacks the exchange, I capture, rook captures, okay? Now queen starts to re-maneuver around to here. So she, she wants to come to the h file with ideas of check, yeah? King goes to there, looking dangerous, but it's spiky on both sides, right? <clears throat> now the queen comes up d3 to defend the knight, and I now move my queen to h6. So I actually took quite a bit of time over that one. Now the king moves away, and now I really had to think, do I have an attack? What is the attack? I thought of all kinds of things. I thought of, you know, bishop there, trying to swap off bishops, something like that. But in the end, it turned out to be relatively straightforward. I knew that if I put my rook here, the king would have to go there, okay? So, in the end, that's what I do. King goes there, and now queen h3, okay? So I'm threatening the queen coming to f1, right? And the king would only have one square to go to, which is here, and then bishop in there would be a beautiful checkmate with the king trapped in the middle of the board. So, uh, White now plays his bishop there, maybe trying to prevent ideas, but I think he, he's lost now, because queen there to f1, sorry about the dogs, king has to go here, beautiful, checkmate, very, very satisfying finish, shame it was an unrated game, I would, I would have won some, um, some rating points for that, but uh, yeah, so all over in 10 minutes, um, it's just a really nice attack, you know, I like those aggressive open games so you know the french exchange that's that's a just a really nice um way to to go about the game always satisfying to get a win like that so i just thought i'd share that with you the french exchange is a nice little opening for for black so there you go thanks for watching i'll see you soon